Hey everybody, welcome back to our last uh, session of this event. Uh, this session is titled, How Will Data Drive the Next Generation of Digital Finance? And we have a panel and a moderator who are uniquely equipped to answer this question. So in order to introduce the panelists and kick things off, I'd like to, to first welcome our uh, moderator, Amit Goyal. So Amit is the founder of Medici Global, a leading fintech uh, market research company and think tank. Uh, they do fantastic work in the ecosystem, and uh, Amit can introduce all of our speakers and begin the event. Over to you, Amit. Thanks, Arevan, and uh, sorry for the delay, everyone. Um, good evening. Um, you know, congratulations, first of all, to Samati, all the FIPs, FIUs, regulators, iSpirit, and all the companies involved who have done a lot of hard work, uh, and, you know, the stage we have reached in terms of AA developments. Um, uh, what we have been observing over the years is that across industries, there is a great discussion and action happening on the potential ability to bring data from you know various sources into one place so that it, it can be effectively used um, and we can build better products and services. So this development is, uh, uh, you know, in India with AA is uh, very timely and very, very important. I'm very excited to have four very esteemed panelists uh, to discuss about the future of data driven digital financial services. Uh, very quickly to introduce them, uh, we have Saurabh Nigam, who is the CTO at DMI Finance, uh, which is a pan-India credit platform, uh, you know, works across corporate lending, housing finance, digital consumer finance, and MSME finance. Um, we have uh, Arjun Singh, who is the managing director of uh, Asia of Udli uh, Infotech. Uh, Udli is a global, global company in uh, data aggregation and data analytics platform. Um, we also have Shrikant Rajgopalan, who is the Chief Executive Officer of Perfios AA, which is into uh, account aggregation services. And then we have uh, Manish Bhatia, who is the President of Technology, Data, uh, Science, uh, and Analytics at Lending Card. Uh, uh, Lending Card is a company into small uh, business loans. Now, um, we have uh, we had some fantastic discussions earlier about you know the interesting and important use cases of uh, uh, you know AA. Uh, in this session, we'll focus more on data and technology, which goes behind it and discuss some of the nuances around data driven uh, financial services. And towards that end, uh, my first question is actually to Shrikant. Um, and I'll just jump right into the, you know, the brass decks around data. And Shrikant, my question to you is that how important is the authenticity of the data, you know, the clean, clean data, as they say, for the success of a at a broader level in, in your uh, you know, what are your thoughts on on the authenticity and the cleanliness of the data? Thanks, Amit. I think that's a great uh, start off question. Um, to me, I think the importance of clean data uh, is actually, you can't understate it. And I have three uh, cases in point, if you may. The first is at an individual level, individual level at a consumer level. Um, till now, there's been no way for me to show my unique data, my life lifestyle patterns, my financial patterns, to actually seek and consume a product that's made for me. Most products in the financial industry are made for that mythical average consumer. As an example, every credit card has a 2 to 3% monthly average uh, you know, interest rate as a 30 to 50 day payment window. Uh, but that may not work necessarily for me. So in the future, what, I, what I'm hoping I will see as, a, as an individual is given my unique spend patterns, my unique cash flow patterns, my unique you know, cash flow needs, can, can a financial institution design a product for a target segment of one right? uh, and get rid of this law of averages where typically what you have is a good borrower is paying for a not so good borrower. Right? So I'd love to see that happen. The second is, I think, from an institution perspective, from an FIP and FIU perspective, um, there's been feverish activity in digitizing processes, right? Just today, Bank of Baroda made a very bold statement that half their retail and SME portfolio will be paperless and straight through uh, in the next few quarters. Um, the hidden uh, friction there is no matter how much you digitize your processes, your incoming data might still not be digital. People are still submitting PDF statements, paper statements. Uh, so unless you're able to digitize the entire first mile, uh, you're only going to get so much of uh, you know bang for your buck. Right? 
So A is the perfect tool because while there are other tools, you could upload a PDF statement, et cetera, et cetera. This is the one that comes with a guarantee of safety, regulated data exchanges, consumer protection. It's like uh, backed by very, very uh, strong data protection laws. And the third is um, all of us have read about financial institutions sitting on mountains of data, getting in more and more mountains of data every day and investing very heavily into AI and other such technologies just to make life better for the consumers and maybe for their processes. Again, that depends on the quality of your AI, the quality of um, what you get as an output is absolutely a function of the kind of data coming in. So the more authentic the data, hopefully the, the more accurate the outcome of that AI recommendation, and hopefully the less the bias that comes into uh, those, those uh, decisions. So to me, I think clean, authentic, um, indisputable digital data is the foundation on which a lot of a lot of innovation can be built. Over to you, Amit. Right. No, absolutely very well summarized about the importance of authenticity of data. Um, that actually takes me to the next question. Um, you know, the two guys with a technology background here, also from FIU background, Saurabh and Manish. Uh, question to you is um, that what are your expectations from, uh, you know, the, uh, from the AAs in terms of being able to provide a very frictionless experience to the end users, right? Uh, so we are talking about ease of integration, you know, the format of the data and, and so many other things, right? You, you would be able to elaborate more on that. I think it will be very good for Shrikant and Arjun to also hear from, from you guys. Yeah, I think, uh, thanks, Amit. Uh, it was uh, really wonderful to be here. Um, Shrikant has put the point very well, said authentic data and it should be quick and easy to receive by, uh, uh, by the uh, lender. So um, I just want to summarize in, in a very, um, um, uh, in, an, in a nutshell, um, if we will consider credit as a fabric, and every data point as a thread. So if the thread is stronger, your uh, underwriting fabric is going to be much, much stronger. So um, so if, if we will keep on getting the authentic data and in a manner which can be used by the lenders and it can be given by the customer in an appropriate and easy manner, then uh, sky is the limit for for any kind of an institution to build any kind of a product. So that's what my thought. Um, right. Like, oh, Thanks, so uh, Manish. Uh, what are your expectations from this? No, I think uh, you know a couple of points. One is just table stakes, right? Where uh, you know obviously for data to be used, uh, you know it needs to be simple because I think the devil is in the transformation of data. Right. And that's where the entire specifications of AA has come in to say, OK, this is how banking data will look now. Now, I think that is, uh, you know, very transformational and also very simple. And which is table stakes where, you know, any FIP that comes into the ecosystem, they know exactly how to sort of export that data so that it can be consumed. So, you know, that's a very, very powerful Obviously, consent is also the other side from a consumer standpoint, but actually being able to connect the data from different FIPs is, a, uh, you know, that as, and again, you know, as different versions would evolve, you'll find other things. But, you know, that is one of the table stakes on, on basically transforming data so that it's consumable. Right. No, very well summarized by both of you. Um, uh, let me move over to Arjun, uh, who has, uh, who works for a company which is a global a pioneer in data aggregation and also Arjun, you had um, you have a global experience. I, I know that you have spoken about you know how different countries compare on the implementation models of open banking, right? So we would love to hear from you about how do you compare US, UK, India in terms of the sort of the implementation model and how we are going about uh, A. Thank you, Amit. So I personally believe that I personally get excited by really strong architecture design. And I have not seen anything in the world which is comparable to what is unfolding in India, 
under let's say the broad umbrella of the India stack. It says it has a stunning set of components and you juxtapose them alongside each other. And I believe that in a fairly short time, we will become the number one digital country, the number one country digitally in the world, especially in financial services. Um, there are so many principles that have underpinned this, this India stack that uh, would be lovely to discuss if we don't have that kind of time. But for example, when Sid and I were presenting in, in Edinburgh to regulators from around the world at an FData conference, they asked the UK and the European uh, regulators saying, if you were to do the whole thing all over again, what would you do differently after listening to our panels? And they said we would start with an identity because they don't have a way to to knit it all together with a standard digital identity, for example. So our pieces are converging very well. The principles are focused on making it better for India. So for example, if you look at the way that many, let's say, African countries or South American countries, their oil and resources have been exploited by international um, you know, conglomerates with very little uh, benefit to locals by making sure that Indian data is going to be held in India and that Indian uh, intelligence builds out products in India, we are making sure that we create the next set of unicorns out of this country, which is wonderful. So there are a lot of principles which are designed for India. And especially I would say, <clears throat> The fascinating challenge is how to design for Bharat. So a situation which is such a variety of languages, such a problem with accessibility, a data set which is very different to what we're used to in, in urban India. So I know that Saurabh and uh, Manish are both, you know, far advanced than the rest of us in thinking through, how do you continuously increase financial inclusion and broaden the scope of coverage to a to a set of users who are different to what we've been used to so far. So Nandan estimated when we spoke last July that there are still about 90 to 110 million Indians who are outside the credit net, largely in Bharat, who we can bring in through digitalization, through, this, uh, a, through the a um, methodology of bringing data together, and through a lot of um, innovation from the fintechs and other companies in dealing with languages, in dealing with places where bandwidth is limited. Um, so I think the, and in dealing with absolutely new credit models, which add alternative data sets to the traditional credit history data sets. I think that's the opportunity that lies before us that is unfolding with this really brilliant architecture that has been put into place. And right. so I have to say, I would say the UK is the only country which has really mandated the banks to open their uh, APIs. Australia hasn't, the US hasn't, India hasn't. And therefore our timelines are different. There may be other advantages and pros and cons, but certainly if you look at the US, it's so controlled by the main banks. So it's a fairly non-standard, fairly slow process that is unfolding. Um, India, there's been a good push through through iSpirit, through Nilikani, through others. So we are getting the FIPs and it looks like there's light at the end of the tunnel now. Australia is too early to comment. Australia is hoping that the power of the marketplace creates a win-win-win for all players. And that would be great. But it's a little bit early at the moment. Right. And lastly, I would just say, and I know I, I spoke too much, is that the agency model in the UK, you know, it is unrealistic to think that you can just work with FIPs and fintechs or FIUs. There are a bunch of other players who can take the responsibility to, as uh, Shrikan so well put it, to get that data right. And so that the people who are lending, people like DMI and Lending Card, are not wasting time on the quality of the data and making sure that that's correct, the authenticity of the data. They are focusing on their core business. If there are agencies in the middle who, who get that right, and that's been slow in, in most countries other than 
the UK to date in recognizing that importance and in legitimizing it. Right. No, very well said. I think uh, even in the previous panel, it was discussed that India has this opportunity to leapfrog because of uh, the work uh, done on identity and payments and the entire India stack. And, um, you know, you rightly also summarized that, uh, you know, how to contrast between mandated uh, countries with open banking like UK versus market driven, uh, you know, uh, uh, countries like US and India. Um, so there's this, uh, you know, let me move over to the next topic and back to you, Shrikant. Um, one of the things they say, right, is data is the new oil. And, you know, I, I sort of always like to add that only if you know how to mine it and how to store it and how to protect it and how to prevent leakage. Right. So my question to you is that how do we ensure privacy and protection of this data that is uh, going to be collected through AIS? Great question, Amit. I think, um, you know, before I dive straight into the protection thing, I think um, all of us are, as an ecosystem our number one task over the next 12 to 18 months is to be uh, is to earn customer trust is to earn the trust of people like not just people like you and i who are digitally savvy but the average bharat customer that aa is indeed her tool it is a tool in her hands for her benefit so number one i think um, to me the biggest collective initiative we have to take over the next few months is that education, um, digital literacy for the customer to say that you have so much of data in your hands. Here is how you can use it better. That said, uh, I think there are some systemic controls already in place. Uh, one thing that you notice about the RBI's master directions is that they have very, very clearly um, avoided any conflicts of interest between the agency, the consent manager, and the provider and the user of data. In fact, they've gone as far as to make it double blind that the FIP doesn't know who the FI user uh, is. So there is no chance for gaming the system and vice versa from the FIU side. So I think um, in the short to medium term, by that I mean possibly six to 12 months, uh, we're going to see a very calibrated, gradual, but more and more um, purposeful rollout of the ecosystem within entities which are strongly regulated by one of the existing regulators, maybe an RBI, tomorrow is a SEBI. Uh, that is going to lay the foundation. That is a necessary condition, but in my opinion, not sufficient. To me, I think the biggest driver of innovation is going to be that three 20 year olds in a garage with a brilliant idea, you know, unlimited computing power, thanks to cloud, who can quickly get together six different data sources and create a wow for the consumer, right? Uh, but that is going to take some doing because for that, you need a much broader privacy law. You need much, much more uh, inclusive sets of mechanisms where data fiduciaries are controlled and you need a very strong enforcement mechanism through things like the Data Protection Authority. So I think I'm... Uh, for the next six to 12 months, until that falls into place, we, have, we still have a lot of work to do, right? We need to educate customers how to make, uh, you know, about the fact that they have agency over the data. We need to make sure that uh, we are doing, each of us is doing our job and not overstepping onto other uh, territories and collectively actually drive some of the wow use cases. I think uh, the previous panel said it very well. If you focus the next six months on building two or three compelling use cases that could not have been done except for an AA data fetch. I think that would be a great milestone to chase. Right. Talking of milestones, I also wanted to, uh, you know, I had this question that, uh, uh, you know, especially this question is to Saurabh and Manish, you know, uh, how you guys think about it, that as FIUs, uh, what kind of models will you deploy to sort of add value to the ecosystem, right? Especially we know that A's are going to be data blind. They can't store the data. So what do you what do you see is the need and opportunity for the FIUs to do, you know, interesting stuff with data? I don't know. You, you'll use AI ML for some of this. I, I wanted to know your thoughts, you know, as technologists, uh, what, what kind of uh, value add are you looking at? OK, so um, there, there are a number of value adds. Uh, first of all, um, um, at the moment, there is only a, uh, for a customer authentic data is bureau data. Th 
then there is a unauthentic data uh, social data telephone data uh, sms data and number of data points are available and n number of suppliers but those are not authentic data now what we can do is uh, with this another set of authentic data we can build a model around it and see whether uh, is there any authenticity available in the social or or telecom data uh, and and put certain models around and and predict customers uh, spending power uh, customers uh, income we can we can predict n number of things um, with this data and and also the interest levels uh, we can we can predict based on um, the data which we are going to get it from a and compare with the social data and see what are their interest are and how and which particular product can can be pitched to this particular customer which can be um, converted um, in a in a manner which is which is very conducive for for that particular customer um the same same i think point uh, shrikant was also mentioning uh saying that the, each product is supposed to be um uh, customized with the data for for that particular customer so segment of one is is we will able to achieve um with with this authentic data and if um in 6 to 7 months time we will able to bring gst data then the segment for um, uh, individuals who are running a proprietary firm or or a small shop or or a uh, ready or or anything which is which is very small and nobody is able to reach to the, those guys then uh, uh, then this data can change the game for them right manish how would you answer that question yeah yeah so you know i think if i just walk through a customer experience today uh for, with what's available in the ecosystem for a best customer experience and for us to get access to the data made be gst made be tax related made be bank statements made be uh you know tax filings made be pan card you know made be aadhar right all of these are very very frictionful means to gather data now uh i think again once aa comes in and we have various different fips banks would be one of those gsts and all the other information providers if they can basically come in and give us the highway i think use cases are just waiting to be actually uh, used right and i think those are the things that uh, sort of excites us to say you know how do i give that one single touch point where the customer just gives consent uh, to you know whatever different data sources he would want and overall we can use the data now currently uh, you know lending card does do cash flow based scoring and lending right now in for us to gather other alternate data it's it's a humongous effort when it comes to just getting the data so that we could score msmes who are not you know you know uh, you know, very credit uh, you know on the credit history right so they have very thin file things like that how do we actually get access to the credit to these ms msmes is where we actually struggle and i think we're banking a big way on to account aggregator because i think that will give us a window of maturing our ml and ai that we already have exponentially versus sort of going you know one step at a time right i mean to your point manish um... taking that point actually i would like to ask a question over to arjun and sorry you know i have i have to go fast because we have only so much time thanks to everyone by the way for fantastic job with keeping your answers very crisp i'm i'm really impressed thank you so much guys um the question arjun to you is that as manish was saying right like i personally have seen over the last 7 8 years of tracking fintech that we you know on those fancy pitch decks it's always about alternative data and what can be done um but Uh, when you talk to the engineering teams you always hear that how difficult it has been to uh, you know use a lot of the alternative data and here currently notify data schemes you know around banking insurance pf uh, uh, you know fantastic things and we should go one step at a time obviously but uh, you know i'm asking you a slightly difficult question to sort of look at the future and say 
when we uh, you know are there opportunities even beyond the currently notified data sets right so uh, you know thinking about telecom data i was talking to a fintech company which is talking about property data for lenders right so um, what what are your thoughts on how the future looks like in terms of expanding these data sets so you know i think shikant put it very well earlier when he talked about the fact that we are all unique and the uh, the utopia the point of utopia would be if we were able to get goods and services at a price point uh, and a service point that would be tailored to our own uniqueness and that can happen only if people look at many more data points than we are traditionally looking at today um there have been now quite a few examples all around the world so for example sofi in the us which really took student loans to a different level looking at what surrogate data or alternate data could you use for students for a while i mean how how do you solve the fact that they don't have credit history and yet there could be i mean we could all look at students around us and say i would definitely give that person a loan or i would definitely not give that person a loan so where does that come from how did we make the decision can we build that into an algorithm uh at the samadhi hackathon there was a very interesting example of someone who took manrega data for bharat so he said the moment you do some work for on manrega they validate it and post it on their public website saying so and so is you know can get 3 and 1/2000 rupees because we confirmed that the work will done but their process is such that money may take 6 months in the meantime if you can just build this you know put this into a marketplace and anybody can say okay i'll take a you know 3% haircut and give you the rest of the money right now you're getting money into the system just much more frequently so you really if you look at the example of cabbage which i think some people are aware of i mean much amazon merchants what did they do um, cabbage tied up with fedex the moment that the merchant shipped fedex confirmed that the shipment had taken place they financed their their, their shipment so the merchant was getting a uh, working capital you know instantly and was able to have many more cycles of production and amazon was so happy they were ready to give that list to cabbage because their merchants were getting stronger were turning things around faster etc so what a win 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 for fedex for amazon and for the merchants by just a smart digital innovator coming in the middle and building this model just based on uh, the flow of information so like that there are actually many models we see which are i mean uh, account score for example you know looking at people who are subprime you'd consider them the security guard the the waitress in a restaurant they are steady people they are hard working but they have a problem and they get into the cycle of you know the money lender the trap the huge interest so when they have the momentary problem you're tracking their accounts every day in real time and you fund them through that little problem till next payday and so you smoothen out the bumps in their journey and are and and are you have somebody who's willing to pay you a premium for that loan till payday because you save them from a much worse fate of defaulting on something and getting into the traps of non traditional lenders for example uh, so you know i mean we've seen just many models around the world i think as uh, saurabh and uh, manish were saying the opportunities then how are much more i would say the biggest is actually credit there are still 3 billion people in the world 3 billion who don't get credit because the model is too narrow it's just working on that avp in infosys everybody is chasing the avp in infosys who doesn't need the loan and if you could just broaden your model you would really increase the coverage and it it would be a win win for the small business the consumer and the lender right No, it's been very interesting listening to all you guys and throughout the day uh, in this event i see that everybody is so gungo about this uh, you know a initiative um, and and this year has been hard for everyone right so there could not be a better thing to do by this may be the last sort of you know event or panel discussion for all of us at least it is for me um, so why don't we end with like one key takeaway from each one of you and end it at a positive note um, what do you guys say okay i just i just want to add um, um, a little bit on arjun's point um, see if we will have a authentic data for one of the farmer 
and uh, the other farmer is not having which who is staying just next to his door uh, the models can predict his income also and it two use case can come up one the person who is not having any banking uh, that person can be routed to the bank and the, the same person can also be given with a uh, with a lending product uh, because because we know that whoever is staying next to the uh, the farmer who is having the banking data, uh, so it's easy to easy to understand what is his credit worthiness. So my takeaway is uh, uh, this A ecosystem is going to create a um, data thread which is going to strengthen complete uh, credit fabric of India. Right, absolutely. Thank you, Shrikant. Uh, uh, take away statement from you uh, with your permission to Amit um, the first takeaway statement is to uh, entrepreneurs startup wizards um, remember 2016 when the technical launch of UPI got done and imagine where we are today along the way we created about half a dozen unicorns sunicorns and other uh, nice animals it is going to be the next generation of Entrepreneurial in entrepreneurial innovation, wealth creation, and a lot of lot of innovation on behalf of the customer. So, why the message? My message to entrepreneurs is: keep your eyes open. It's a fantastic opportunity coming away. But one request is: put the customer's privacy first. Make sure that anything you do gives agency to the borrower to the consumer. Along the way, we all benefit. That's message number one. Message number two is to the incumbents, the, the current set of financial institutions who have come a long way in the digitization journey. Uh, my fervent request to them is don't treat AA as just another digital channel. Treat it as a completely new business opportunity. Reimagine everything in your processes, products, underwriting, pricing, service delivery. This is a game changer. If you treat it as another channel, you will not get the best ROI out of it. I would go as far as urging people to set up different business units just to innovate on AA. Remember that if there is a theme that we're seeing in all the innovation happening in India, starting with UPI, existing products, existing stacks are being completely de deconstructed into their fundamental layers. In UPI, you had identity, authentication, authorization, all just completely broken up and then put back together into, into a very different shape, right? You had the, um, in, you had the incumbents backstopping the uh, entire system and look at what it did to innovation in the private sphere. So my request to the incumbents is to look at this as a completely new opportunity. Innovate along with the A's, you know, innovate along with the FinTech ecosystem. Uh, so that everybody wins right so that's my two takeaways thank you manish uh a key uh takeaway statement from you yeah yeah I'll, I'll keep it short so you know because of such a big ecosystem that when, when it actually gets uh when it's a big ecosystem as big as this one is born you basically have two sides of the equation right you have the chicken and the egg and uh you know this sort of an opportunity i would it's one of those where it's a strategic investment that you cannot afford to be a bystander. And, uh, you know, in, uh, use cases will come, right? But I think one of the uh, thing is we need the highway so that more and more use cases can come. So I would really appreciate more and more FIPs coming under the platform uh, so that data just becomes even more accessible. So I don't know if there's a way for you know, account aggregated ecosystem, the government, the regulators to sort of get, come in, but that is the basic requirement so that our reach to Bharat can be more substantial. Right. And I'm sure um, a lot of banks and FI guys uh, would be listening to this. Uh, Arjun, uh, let's let's sort of end this with your uh, key takeaway statement from here. So my dream too is that as India accelerates towards being the number one digital financial services country in the world that we are able to dramatically increase financial inclusion and the scope of credit coverage for Bharat 
and bring startup capital and working capital to MSMEs so that the engine of the economy really gets powered over the next few years. And I'm confident with the India stack and this great AA set of regulation and development that we will be able to play our role in making that happen. Great. So uh, this has been a fantastic session for me. Uh, really, really great to hear from all you guys. Um, I would like to sort of hand it over back to Ariman, uh, if you're still there. Um, Ariman? Of course. Of course. Thank you so much, Amit, and Arjun, Srikant, Saurabh, and Manish. Uh, that was just a fantastic panel uh, and a fitting sort of end to this event. I hope that everybody in the audience, you guys like this event even a fraction as much as I did. I learned so much and uh, really am enthused to hear the, uh, you know, what everybody had to say. Um, so before, uh, before we kind of give like a, a last remark, can we please have a, a warm round of virtual applause for our panel? Thank you so much once again, all of you. Um, just from, uh, from my side, I'd like to recap the event. Uh, initially, we had a State of the Union address by Bamsi and Mahesh of Sehmati, talking about some milestones that this, uh, this ecosystem has passed already and will pass in the future. After that, we had a keynote session by Mr. Sudarshan Sen, executive, former executive director of RBI, uh, followed by a panel discussion with a number of uh, uh, banking leaders talking about the future of open banking in India. Uh, then we had a show and tell session from a couple of account aggregator companies showing what they've built in production with uh, some of the country's largest financial institutions. And then this was the final uh, event of the evening. All of these events were amazing in my view, and they are all recorded, so they'll be uploaded to the Sahamati YouTube channel later. So please be sure to check those out and share them if you'd like to have a second look. Uh, really, thank you so much for being here, to all of our panelists, to everybody uh, in the audience. I mean, you stayed uh, 41 minutes over time, and we really appreciate that. 2020 has sucked in many ways, um, really unprecedented, but also amazing things happened this year. And we can see the evidence of that in the way that you know, this community has come together uh, to sort of um, to, to, to pass this milestone. So thank you so much, everyone. And I hope that 2021 is a fantastic year for all of you, your families, and for this ecosystem as a whole. Um, we will speak to you very shortly. On behalf of everyone at Samati, thank you to everyone who attended this or was a part of this. Uh, Happy New Year and see you very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.